Hey everyone, Andrew here. Last week, I launched an open source static site generator project that used geolocation and Google Maps to show restaurants still open in my area during the COVID-19 pandemic. The entire app was built with Vue, and getting both of those features added in was surprisingly easy. So I figured that I'd make a video showing how you could implement them into your new or existing Vue app. I've created a new Vue app using the command line interface and spun it up with npm run serve. You can see it here in the browser at localhost 8081. Let's dive right into it and get those features added in. The first one we're going to focus on is geolocation. Instead of getting the user's location through something like their IP address, which could be fairly inaccurate, this package uses the geolocation API that most modern web browsers come equipped with. The accuracy of this can be pretty incredible. On most desktops, it'll pinpoint at least the city, but on mobile devices, you can expect to get a precise location with the help of onboard GPS systems. The package we'll be using is called View Browser Geolocation, and it's arguably the most popular and straightforward plugin solution that I've found for Vue apps. Back on our app, in our command line, let's install it with npm. Instead of using the default hello world component, we're going to create a new one called map.view. Opening up our new component, I'm going to scaffold out a super simple layout, just a div containing a title and some dynamically inserted data points. One for the latitude and one for the longitude, both from a coordinates object. That data will be stored directly in our component, so let's create that object in our data return. We'll use zeros as placeholders. Whenever this component loads up, this is when we want to grab the user's location through the geolocation API call. We can add our code for that in the created method, which will fire as soon as the view instance is created, early in the uploading process. Real quick, let's change what component is loaded up when our app starts. Right now it's loading up that hello world component. We can easily swap that out with our map component by changing the import statement and adding in our component's element tag. Saving these changes, we can go back to our browser and see our demo text and initial coordinates data displaying. Let's actually work on getting the user's location now. Opening up our app's main.js file, we'll import the view geolocation package and initialize it with the view.use method. These modifications will give us access to a global helper that we can use throughout the rest of our app. Back on our map component, in that created method we added earlier, we can use that helper. Calling this get location will prompt the user to reveal the location to our app. We're going to pass in an empty object as we don't have any options or modifications to add in. The response will be passed through as a promise, and so we can handle a successful request being returned back a coordinates object. We're going to replace our whole data coordinates object with the one that's returned. Saving our app and going back to the browser, we're prompted to give our app access to our location. Let's hit accept, and after a few seconds, we see our latitude and longitude displayed. You can see the whole object in our View Tools debug menu. The new object replacing our zero lat long data points from earlier. There's also an accuracy and altitude attribute that we won't be using, but I'll return from that plugin. So, what happens if we don't accept the location sharing? Well, nothing, at least to the user. But if we open up the console, we can see a clear error is being thrown because an uncaught exception in the promise wasn't handled in our code. Let's change that. Back on our created method in our map component, we'll add a catch in after the then method in our get location promise and just alert out the error to the user. Saving and going back to our browser, the error returned, no access granted, has been alerted to the user and it is now no longer dumped into the console log. All right, we have these coordinates. Now let's try and put them to use in a Google map. While we could implement Google Maps using their JavaScript API, 
There's a super simple plugin called View2 Google Maps that accomplishes this in a pretty robust package. First step, like with anything else, is installing it with npm. After that's done, let's import it into our app through our main.js file like we did with our geolocation plugin. On the viewUse method, where we call this package, it expects an API key for the maps to load properly. For now, let's keep this blank, and I'll show you how to grab a key in a little bit. This plugin comes with a few powerful view components that we can include directly in our app. The main one we're going to focus on in this video is GMAP Map, which renders out the actual Google Map. There's a variety of attributes that we can attach to it. The two that we're going to concentrate on right now are Center and Zoom. Center expects an object consisting of a lat and longe item, each one represented with an integer or float for the latitude and longitude of the center of the map. Zoom expects an integer between 1 and 20, corresponding to how zoomed into the center of the map you want to be. I'm going to use 7 here, which should display an entire city and surrounding area. We can also style this map like we would any other HTML element, and I'm going to specify a fixed height and width here just for our demo. Let's save and take a look at our application. Our map's loaded up. Well, almost. It's overlaid with for development purposes only because we're missing that API key from earlier during the map's initialization. If we search, there's a specific page about getting a key for the Google Maps JavaScript API, which is what this package is using to render out our map. It's a bit confusing, but let's follow the steps. First, we'll go to the Google Cloud Console. From there, either select or create a new project. I'm going to create a new one for this demo and title it View Geolocation Video. After it's created, we can enable the Maps JavaScript API for the project. Then we can head to the credentials page, and since there's none available for this project yet, a link is provided to show us where to create some. At the top of this new page, click Create Credentials, and then select API Key from the dropdown. Your API key will be presented to you in a pop-up. Let's copy it and paste it into our key attribute in the main.js app file. Saving our app and going back to the browser, we can see that the overlay has been removed from our map and it's displaying exactly what it should. I'm just going to fix the margin on this real quick and center the map. While I'm fixing things, let's also add a new coordinates display next to our location one. This will show us the current center coordinates on the map. We'll rename our previous coordinates object, my coordinates, and the maps coordinates object will be called map coordinates. That's displaying properly in the browser, but the map coordinates aren't attached. Additionally, our coordinates aren't connected to the map. Let's fix those issues. First, for our coordinates, instead of passing in an object to our map's center attribute, we can just pass in our my coordinates object. Saving the app and refreshing, the map is centered over the position that was found by our browser's geolocation API. 
To get the map coordinates, we need to access the map object. We can do that through a handy promise from the View to Google Maps plugin that we're using and by adding a ref to our GMAP map component. I'll just call it map ref. First off, we're going to use the mounted method after our created one that we called earlier. This will fire anything inside of it after the component has loaded and attached to the view instance. It's a perfect place to call any code that requires a view component to be ready. The line we're adding is this, refs, map ref, map promise, and on the completion of it, we're going to attach the return map object to our data object with the same name. Now, with that map object, we can call some pretty neat methods. For instance, get bounds, which will return two objects consisting of two coordinates each, the four of them representing the four corners of the map in view. There's also get center and get zoom, which we'll be using shortly. Back on our map component, we're going to remove the map coordinates object from the data return, and instead we're going to make this a computed property. This means that it's an item, object, or any other data point whose value is constantly calculated based on the code inside of the method we specify. Adding a computed section to our component, we can then create a map coordinates method, the same name that we used in the previous data object. It's going to return an object with two keys, lat and long. However, we want this object to dynamically return the current coordinates of the center of the map. In order to accomplish this, we'll have to flush out this method a little bit more. First, we'll add in a conditional that checks for the existence of our map object. If it's not available yet, we're just going to return zeros for both values. Once it is initialized, we can then call getCenter and either lat or long to get both values for our object. Saving and returning to our application, we can see that the map coordinates are updating as we move the map around. Perfect! Except, they're a little too specific. If we look at our location, the coordinates are truncated to four decimal points. I'd like our map coordinates to match that, so let's go back into our map coordinates computed property and add two fixed four to each of the get center calls. Okay, that's much better. The last thing that I want to demonstrate is saving and displaying our user's map center and zoom level after they've reopened or refreshed the application. The GMAP map component has a dragon event that we can listen to and fire off our own event for. Let's call this event handle drag. Each time a user moves the map, we want to get the current center and zoom level of the map, store it, and then use that as a reference whenever the app loads up. I've created our handle drag method, and also created two variables. One is going to be for our map center object using the same method that's in our computed property, and the other is for our zoom integer using get zoom. We're going to simply store these in the browser's local storage as a center and zoom property. Since local storage doesn't store JSON natively, we'll have to stringify the center object before storing it. If we refresh our app, move the map around a little bit, and then open up our application tab in DevTools, we can see that in local storage, our zoom and center items are there. Now, what we need to do is check if they exist on load, and if so, use those values when our map is initialized. In our created method, under where we're getting the user's location, I'm going to add a conditional that'll check for the existence of our center object in local storage. If it exists, I'm simply going to replace our my coordinates data object with the entire parsed JSON value of the center object in local storage. Next, I'm going to use another conditional to check if the zoom item exists in local storage. And if it does, I'm going to replace the data object value of the same name with the value from that local storage object. I'll also need to add this as an attribute to our GMAP map component, which is fairly straightforward.
Lastly, I'm going to move the get location call to an else on the local storage center conditional. It'll be a fallback if there's no previously saved center available to our app. All right, let's save and refresh our app to make sure everything's working. Okay, we're currently centered on our location, and if we drag and move the map around, we can see those values update in local storage. Now refreshing, we can see that the map retains its center and zoom level that it was on after we last moved it. If we delete those values and refresh again, it pulls in our current location just as expected. That's all for now. You've learned how to install and configure two view packages for geolocation and Google Maps. They're both insanely powerful, and I've just only scratched the surface in explaining the wide range of features and applications that they both have. If you'd like any further explanations, use cases, or examples for these, please let me know in the comments. As always, if you have any questions about this or any other web development topics, please feel free to reach out to me here or on my Twitter linked below. Thanks for watching.